Hi, today we're going to be learning about dividing powers with like bases. We're going to start off by looking at division. When we are dividing things, it can be written like this. You have 24 divided by 18, where we use the divide sign or the division sign. Another way of writing this would be to write it as a fraction. So we have something like 24 over 18, where our fraction line is the same as our divide sign. So divide, division, and fractions work together. They go hand in hand. Okay, so anything that's before the divide sign is part of the numerator, which is the top of the fraction. Anything that's after the divide sign is part of the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction. Now, you may be used to simplifying a fraction like this, where you say, okay, so two goes in there, and we divide that by two and we get 12, divide this by two and we get nine. And then three goes into both, so I can divide by three and I get four, and I divide by three and I get three. So then this simplifies and I get four over three as my final answer. Okay, now there is another way of representing this and that is to write it like this. So I take the 24 over 18, and I'm going to write it so that in such a way that I'm going to write each of those, 24 and 18, as products of their prime factors. So 24 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And 18 is the same as 2 times 3 times 3. Okay, so now what I'm going to do now is, now that I've written them as products of their prime factors, I can easily see the factors that are the same to cancel them out, which is actually the same thing that I was doing over here. I divided by 2 first and then divided by 3. It's the same thing, but over here I can actually see the 2s and the 3s that I'm going to be cancelling out. So I divide that by 2 and I get 1. Divide that by 2 and I get 1. Then I don't have any other 2s at the bottom to cancel out the top, but I have a 3 over here and I have a 3 over there. So I can cancel this out, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get 1 at the top and the bottom there as well. And then once I've done that, I can go, then go and say what this is equal to. So on the top of my fraction, I've got 1 times 2 times 2 times 1 is 4 over, and on the bottom of the fraction, I have 1 times 1 times 3, which is 3. So I get the same answer as what I got this way. Now you might be wondering, but why would you do that? It takes longer. But this is actually important to understand when we are going to start with our powers, where we're dividing powers. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at dividing with exponents. Okay, so let's have a look at an example where we are dividing with exponents and we're going to compare two where one of them has got the same base in the two powers and one of them has not got the same base in the two powers. So the first one we're going to do is 3 to the power of 6 divided by 3 to the power of 4 and the other one is 3 to the power of 6 divided by 3 or 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so now this one, they've got the same bases, and this one they have not got the same bases. Okay, so now just like I did with this example up here, I am going to rewrite this as a fraction. So I'm going to write this as 3 to the power of 6 over 3 to the power of 4. And then, just like I did over here, I'm going to write it out in expanded form. This, in, in this case, I was writing it as a product of its prime factors, and that's what I'm going to be doing here as well, but I'm going to be writing it in expanded form. It's actually already a product of its prime factors. So I'm going to now go and do that. So 3 to the power of 6 is the same as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then on the bottom of my fraction, I have 3 to the power of 4, which is the same as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so now just like I was able to do in this example over here, where I was able to cancel out the things that are the same, I can do the same thing in this example that I've got here. So anything that is the same on the top and the bottom of the fraction, I can cancel out. Okay, so I can say 3 goes in there once and 3 goes in there once. 3 goes in there once, 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 and 3 goes in there once, and 3 goes in there once. And so now, what I'm left with on the top of my fraction is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which I don't have to worry about at all, because I'm still multiplying by something else, and whenever we multiply by 1, it doesn't change whatever we're multiplying by. 
So I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to worry about the three times three. And three times three is the same as three squared. It is also the same as nine, but I'm not writing it as nine because I want to show you what's happening with our exponents. Okay, and then at the bottom of my fraction, I've got one times one times one times one. Now, when your denominator is equal to one, which is the case over here, you don't need to write it. So we can just leave it as three squared. So now let's have a look at what happened over here. So I started with three to the power of six. Over there, I started with three to the power of six divided by three to the power of four. And when I simplified it, Let's just have a look at what happened over here. I cancelled out the threes on the top and the bottom of the fraction, all the ones that were the same as each other. And because they were all threes, and because I had four on the bottom and I had more than four on the top, all of the ones on the bottom were able to cancel out with some of the ones on the top. And I was left o and I had two left over, the ones that weren't able to cancel. So an easy way that we can go straight from there to there is to say, well, if there's fewer on the bottom of my fraction, then all of those will cancel out the same number on the top of the fraction, which is the three to the power of six. So I can cancel those out and I can say, well, how many are going to be left over? So if I had six and I canceled out four, how many are left over? I'm left with two. So a quick way of doing that is to take these two exponents and subtract them. So six minus four would give me two. Now let's have a look at this example and see what happens when we don't have the same base. So in this case, I'm again going to write it as a fraction. So I've got three to the power of six over two to the power of four. But now in this case, when I write it out in expanded form, I have three times three times three times three times three times three, which is the same as I had in the first example. But now, at the bottom of my fraction, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, I can't cancel any of those out because none of them are the same. And I can only cancel things on the top and things on the bottom. I, can, I can't cancel top and top, and I can't cancel bottom and bottom. So I can't cancel any of the threes with each other. I can't cancel any of the twos with each other. And I can't cancel any threes and twos on the top and the bottom. So basically, what that means is I have to leave this as three to the power of six over two to the power of four. I can't simplify that any further, where with this one I could. So now we're going to get to our rule that we're able to use when we are working with division of powers with like bases. So first of all, in order for us to use this rule, the bases have to be the same. Like we saw in this example over here, the bases have to be the same, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now, Let's see what our rule is going to be. So when you have um, powers that you're dividing, where you, which have the same base. So when dividing powers, with the same base. Now that's very important, they have to have the same base, because as we saw in this example where we didn't have the same base, we couldn't do anything, we couldn't simplify it, it stayed the same. Okay, so when we are dividing powers with the same base, what do we do? We keep the base the same. The three, which was our base over here, our three did not change, it stayed three. So we keep the base the same, And we subtract the exponents because 6 minus 4 will give me 2. Okay, and now we can also write this like this, where I can say a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus N. Okay, so remember, the a's are telling me that I, they're both the bases of the powers over here, and they are both a, which means that they are the same as each other. Okay, so if you have the same bases in the powers that you are dividing, 
you keep the base the same. I didn't change from A to anything else, it stayed A. And then I subtract the M and the N, and I get M minus N. So it'll always be the numerator minus the denominator if you're writing it like this. Okay, the numerator is exponent rather, minus the denominator is exponent when you're writing it like this. Okay, uh, so now we are going to do some practice of actually using the rule. So in this example that we're going to do over here, we've got 5 to the power of 9 over 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so 5 to the power of 9. Okay, so now first of all, the whole point of using the rule is that we won't have to write this out in expanded form and cancel out. That's the whole reason that we have the rule, so that we can save ourselves time and save ourselves work and have less chance of making mistakes. So I'm not going to write this out in expanded form like I did with the previous example. I'm going to go straight ahead and say my rule says that if I'm dividing, remember for a fraction line means divide, so I am dividing powers with the same bases, they have the same base of 5, then I can subtract the exponent. So I keep the base the same, it stays 5, and I subtract the 9 and the 4, and that gives me 9 minus 4 is 5. So I end up with 5 to the power of 5. Now when that happens, what's actually happened is, just like we had in our previous example over here, everything that was in the denominator cancelled out, and that's why I don't have a fraction anymore, I have it's just over 1, okay? So the same thing is happening over here, and that's because the first power, the one that is in the numerator, has a higher exponent than the one that's in the denominator. At this stage, we're only going to be working with ones like that, but it can go the other way around, and you'll learn how to do that at another stage. But at this point, so long as the first exponent is higher than the second exponent, and when you're subtracting, you get a positive number, you can just write it like this without having to worry about a fraction anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some time to work on some examples for yourself. So you're going to do these three examples and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on them. Okay, you should hopefully be done with those by now, so let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had 7 to the power of 15 over 7 to the power of 6. So they do have the same base, so that means that I can apply my rule, which means that I'm going to be keeping the base the same, so it's going to stay 7, and then I subtract my exponent, so it goes 15 minus 6, and that gives me 9. So you should have got 7 to the power of 9 for question A. Question B, 
we have 4 to the power of 7 over 4 to the power of 4. Again, the base stays the same, and I subtract my exponent. So 7 minus 4 is 3. So you should have got 4 to the power of 3 for question B. Then for question C, now this one's a little bit more complicated because we have multiplication in our fraction as well. We don't have only one power on the top and one power on the bottom. We have two powers on the top and two powers on the bottom. They're being multiplied together. So what we can do is we can first simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator by doing the multiplication using the rule that we learned in the last lesson, where when we are multiplying powers of the same base, we keep the base the same and we add the exponents. So that's going to give me 9 to the power of 3 plus 9 is 12 over 9 to the power of 4 plus 5 is 9. And then I'm going to apply the rule that we've been learning now for division, where we keep the base the same, and now we subtract the exponents because we are dividing. So 12 minus 9, that gives me 3. So for question C, you should have got 9 to the power of 3. Now, it is actually possible to do this one in one step, where you go 9 cubed times 9 to the power of 9 over 9 to the power of 4, times 9 to the power of 5 and you apply the multiplication and division rules together you say anything that I'm multiplying it so anything that's on the top of the fraction I'm going to add the exponents and anything that's on the bottom of the fraction I'm going to subtract the exponents so I can say 3 plus 9 is 12 minus 4 and minus 5 and that will give me 9 to the power of 3 so you will get the same answer but if you're not confident doing it that way then you can do the, in the middle step over here where you simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and then do the division. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that it is possible to skip straight from there to there if you want to, once you are confident using these rules. Okay, so now let's have a look at another example where we don't only have one base, where we have more than one base in our question. So in this example over here, we have got 3 to the power of 5, times 2 to the power of 8 over 3 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so first of all, if you look over here, you'll see that we have two different bases. We've got 3s and we've got 2s as our bases. When we are doing questions like this, we have to always work with the same basis because that's what our rule works for. It works for the same basis. Okay, so I have to work with the threes together and I have to work with the twos together. Now, I'm going to do the twos first because I always prefer to write the powers with the lower basis first. So I'm going to do my twos first. I'm going to start off by saying uh, I've got two to the power of, and then I'm dividing these. So eight minus five gives me three. So because I'm dividing the powers with the same basis, I subtract the exponents times. Then I'm going to do my threes. 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 4, the base stays the same, and I subtract the exponents. 5 minus 4 is 1, but now I don't need to write that 1, because remember, whenever you have a power where the exponent is 1, you don't need to write it, you can leave it out. Okay, so that is just three to, 2 to the power of 3 times 3. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some time to work on some for yourself. I'm going to give you two, uh, 3 minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, you should be done with those now, so let's go through each of those examples. So in question A, we had 5 to the power of 14 times 7 to the power of 20 over 5 to the power of 8 times 7 to the power of 6. So I'm going to start off by working on my 5s. So that gives me 5 to the power of, and I subtract the exponent, 14 minus 8 gives me 6. Times, I've got then 7 to the power of 20 divided by 7 to the power of 6, that gives me 7 to the power of, and I subtract the exponents, 14 minus 6, oh, 10, 20 minus 6 is 14. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Question B, we had 11 to the power of 6 times 2 to the power of 9 over 2 to the power of 3 times 11 to the power of 5. Now, in this case, the 11 and the 11 and the 2 and the 2 are not in the same positions in the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, the 11 is first and the 2 is second. And in the denominator, the 2 is first and the 11 is second. It doesn't matter so long as you work with all of the things that have the same bases together. Okay, so I'm going to work first with the 2s. So I'm going to say 2 to the power of 9 divided by 2 to the power of 3 is 2 to the power of 9 minus 3 is 6 times. 11 to the power of 6 divided by 11 to the power of 5 is 11 to the power of 6 minus 5, which is 1, and I don't need to write that one. So it's just 2 to the power of 6 times 11. Then the last question, question C, we now have 3s and 5s, and we've got more than one 3 or 5 in the numerator and denominator. So now you're going to have possibly another step, or you could have skipped straight to the, the final answer if you are confident using the rules. So over here, I'm just going to first show the, the step in between by simplifying the numerator. So I've got 3 to the power of 8 times 3 to the power of 6 gives me 3 to the power of 8 plus 6 is 14 times, and then 5 to the power of 10. And that is over 5 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 4 is 5 to the power of 2 plus 4, which is 6, times 3 to the power of 10. So now I have got a fraction where I only have one power with the base of 3 in the numerator and one power with the base of 5 in the numerator. And the denominator, I have the same thing. Also one power with a 5 as a base and one power with a 3 as a base. So now I'm going to go and simplify with my division rule. So first I'm going to do my 3s. So that gives me 3 to the power of... 14 minus 10 is 4 times 5 to the power of 10 minus 6 is also 4. So for question C, you should have got 3 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 4. Okay, now let's have a look at an, exa at an example where we have slightly more going on in our uh, bases. Okay, so in this example, we've got some fractions that we, or some brackets that we're going to be working with that we have to simplify. Okay, so just get it like that. Right, so in this example, I have got 1 plus 2 to the power of 8 times 6 plus 1 to the power of 9. And that is over 3 plus 4 to the power of 4 times 5 minus 2 to the power of 7. Okay, so now, Bedmas says that I have to do anything that's inside brackets first. So in this example, I have to first simplify that addition and subtraction inside my brackets. So I'm going to say 1 plus 2 is 3 to the power of 8 times 6 plus 1 is 7 to the power of 9. That is over 3 plus 4 is 7 to the power of 4 times 5 minus 2 is 3 to the power of 7. So now I'm going to go and use my rule to simplify this. So I'm going to take my 3's, so I have 3 to the power of 8 divided by 3 to the power of 7 is 3 to the power of 1, which I don't need to write, times 7 to the power of 9 divided by 7 to the power of 4 is 7 to the power of 9 minus 4, which is 5, and I do need to write that 5. So that's what you should get for this example, 3 times 7 to the power of 5. Okay, so now I'm going to give you three examples that you're going to work on yourself. And again, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now, so let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had 6 minus 4 to the power of 12 times 2 plus 3 to the power of 6 min uh, over 9 minus 7 to the power of 4 times 9 minus 4 to the power of 4. Okay, so first of all, we need to go and simplify what's inside our bracket. So first, 6 minus 4 is 2 to the power of 12 times 2 plus 3 is 5 to the power of 6 over 9 minus 7 is 2 to the power of 4 times 9 minus 4 is 5 to the power of 4. So now I'm going to go and simplify. I'm going to do my 2's together. So that's 2 to the power of 12 minus 4 is 8 times 5 to the power of 6 minus 4 is 2. So you should, you should have got for question A, 2 to the power of 8 times 5 to the power of 2. Then question B. Again, I'm going to simplify what's inside my brackets first. So I've got 1 plus 4 is 5 to the power of 11 times 6 plus 5 is 11 to the power of 10 over 8 plus 3 is 11 to the power of 5 times 9 minus 4 is 5 to the power of 7. And now I'm going to go and simplify. So I've got 5 to the power of 11 divided by 5 to the power of 7 is 5 to the power of 4 times 11 to the power of 10 divided by 11 to the power of 5 is 11 to the power of 5. So that's what you should have got for question B. And then for question C, same thing again. We're going to start off by simplifying what's inside the bracket. So I've got 1 plus 1 is 2 to the power of 3 times 6 minus 3 is 3 to the power of 7 times 4 minus 2 is 2 to the power of 5. Okay, then that is over 9 minus 7, which is 2 to the power of 6, times 2 plus 1, which is 3 to the power of 4. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify my numerator, and that gives me 2 to the power of 2 to, 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 5 is 2 to the power of 8, times 3 to the power of 7, over 2 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 4. Now remember, you can actually skip out this step. You can go straight from here to the final answer if you are confident using the rules, uh, using multiplication and division together. Okay, so over here I now have my 2 to the power of 8 divided by 2 to the power of 6 gives me 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 7 over 3 to the power of 4 is 3 to the power of 3 by subtracting those exponents. Okay, so that's what we had to do when we have additional subtraction inside the brackets for our bases. Now let's just have a look at what happens when we have negatives in our bases. Okay, now we did learn about this when we were doing multiplication of powers of the same base. So the same concept is going to apply. So this isn't really completely new to you. We're just going to go through an example together and just remind you about how that works. So in this example, we have got negative 2 to the power of 4 times negative and then negative 2 in brackets cubed times negative 2 to the power of 5. Okay, and then that is all over negative 2 in brackets to the power of 6 times negative and then negative 2 to the power of 4. Now remember, having a negative 2 like this with an exponent is not the same as having a negative 2 in brackets with an exponent. If it's in brackets, it means that that exponent must be applied to the negative. If it's not in brackets, it means that it's separate. The negative is separate from the 2 and it's not part of the base, which means that the exponent doesn't get applied to the negative, it only gets applied to the 2. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to just go and get rid of all of those brackets. We're just going to make it easier for us so we don't have multiple different types of exponent or bases to work with. We're going to get it so we have only 2s as, as our bases. Okay, so first of all, that is going to stay as it is for now because it doesn't have any brackets to work with or to worry about. Then I've got times negative. I can't do anything with this minus yet because I don't know yet exactly what's happening with that. Okay, so now we look at this and remember we said if you have an odd exponent, it means that that means that, that, means that there are an odd number 
of negatives being multiplied together, so it's going to stay negative. So this is going to be negative 2 cubed, like that, okay? Times, then I've got negative 2 to the power of 5. Also, an odd exponent means that that is going to stay negative. But I don't need to keep this in brackets because I don't have another minus outside to still times in. So I can just make that negative 2 to the power of 5. Okay, then I'm going to put that over. Now, in my denominator, I've got negative 2 to the power of 6. This is an even exponent, which means that that is going to change to positive 2 to the power of 6 times negative and then negative 2 to the power of 4 also an even exponent means that this is going to change to positive 2 to the power of 4. Now you can write that in brackets if you want to, you don't really have to because it's not a negative and a negative next to each other. Okay and now let's just go and drop those brackets over there that we've got. So I've got negative 2 to the power of 4 times, then I've got a negative and a negative that makes a positive 2 cubed times negative 2 to the power of 5 over two to the power of six times negative two to the power of four. Okay, so now let's simplify our numerator and our denominator separately first. So in the numerator, I've got a negative times a positive times a negative. Because there are two negatives, it's an even number of negatives, it's going to be a positive power on the top that I'm going to have. Then I can multiply my 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 3, and 2 to the power of 5 all together. So it's going to keep the same base of 2, and then I add my exponents. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 5 is 12. Okay, so that's what you should get in the numerator. Positive 2 to the power of 12. Then in the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, we've got a positive times a negative is negative. Then 2 to the power of 6 plus 4, which is 10. And now we can go and simplify that. A positive divided by a negative is negative. The 2 stays the same, and I subtract the, base, the, subtract the exponents, so that's 12 minus 10 is 2. So that should give you negative 2 to the power of 2. Okay, so now I'm going to give you 4 that you're going to work on for yourself, and I'm going to give you 4 minutes to work on this.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with those, so let's go through each of those examples. So for question A, we had negative 5 to the power of 7 times 5 cubed over negative 5 to the power of 5 times negative 5 squared. So first of all, let's go and simplify our numerator and our denominator. So in the numerator, I've got a negative times a positive is negative. And then 5 to the power of 7 times 5 cubed is 5 to the power of 10 over. In the denominator, I have negative 5 to the power of 5 times negative 5 squared. So that's going to be positive 5 to the power of 5 plus 2, which is 7. So I have negative 5 to the power of 10 over positive 5 to the power of 7. And negative divided by a positive is negative. So it's going to be negative 5 to the power of 10 minus 7, which is 3. So for question A, you should have got negative 5 cubed. Question B. Here we have got negative 7 to the power of 5 times negative 7 in brackets to the power of 6 times 7 to the power of 7 over negative 7 squared times 7 to the power of 4 times negative 7 in brackets. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our brackets. So in the numerator, this is going to stay as it is. And then I've got negative 7 to the power of 6. The even exponent means that that is going to change to positive. So it's going to be 7 to the power of 6 times 7 to the power of 7 over. Okay, so at the bottom I've got negative 7 squared times 7 to the power of 4 times, and then this negative 7, there isn't even an exponent, so it's not going to change at all. It's just going to stay exactly as it is. I can just drop the brackets. And now I can go and simplify my numerator and my denominator. So in the numerator, I've got a negative times a positive times a positive. That gives me negative. And then 7 to the power of 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 7 is 18. Over, in the denominator, I've got two negatives. So when I multiply those together, I'm going to get a positive answer. So that's going to be positive 7 to the power of 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 1, which you can't see, but don't forget about it. So 6 plus 1 is 7. And then when you simplify that, it's a negative divided by a positive is negative 7 to the power of 11. So for question B, you should have got negative 7 to the power of 11. Okay, now let's do question C. So in question C, we have 3 to the power of 5 times negative 3 in brackets cubed times negative 3 not in brackets cubed times 3 to the power of 6. And in the denominator, I've got negative 3 squared times negative 3 squared. Again, bracket, no. This one has brackets and that one has no brackets. And then I've got negative 3 in brackets to the power of 5. Okay, so first I'm going to simplify and drop those brackets. So I'm going to have over here 3 to the power of 5 stays as it is times. But then this one over here, the negative or the, the odd exponent means that this is going to stay negative. But there's nothing in front of it that I have to worry about. So I can just drop the brackets straight away. So that's negative 3 cubed times also negative 3 cubed times 3 to the power of 6. Okay, and then that is over negative 3 squared. Now, because it's in brackets, the square is applied to that negative, and it's an even exponent, which means that's going to change to positive. So it's positive 3 squared times, this one stays negative 3 squared because there's no brackets, times, and then negative 3 to the power of 5 is negative because it's an odd exponent, so it stays negative, 3 to the power of 5. And now I can go and simplify my numerator. In the numerator, there are two negatives, so it changes to positive, and that becomes 3 to the power of 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 6 is 17. Over. In my denominator, I've got two negatives again, which makes it positive, so it's going to be positive 3 to the power of 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. And then when you simplify that, you should have ended up with 3 to the power of 8. And then the last one, question D. In question D, we had negative uh, 6 to the power of 5 times negative 6 to the power of 6 over negative 6 times negative 6 cubed times 6 to the power of 4 times negative 6. So first we're going to drop those brackets. 
So over here, I've got negative 6 to the power of 5. That doesn't change. Times. Then over here, this even exponent means that that negative is going to change to positive. So it's going to become positive 6 to the power of 6 over... negative and then negative 6 cubed the odd exponent makes this stay negative so it's going to be negative and then negative 6 cubed times 6 to the power of 4 times negative 6 okay so now I'm going to go and simplify and drop those brackets over there let's just make that a bit longer over there okay so now at the top over here I still have negative 6 to the power of 5 times 6 to the power of 6 and at the bottom this negative and negative is going to become positive so it's positive 6 cubed times 6 to the power of 4 times negative 6 now I can simplify my numerator there's a negative times a positive that becomes negative 6 to the power of 5 plus 6 is 11 over in my denominator, I also have only one negative, so it's going to be negative. Then 6 to the power of 3 times 6 to the power of 4 times 6, that's 3 plus 4 is 7, plus an invisible 1 is 8. So it's 6 to the power of 8. Now in this one, I've got a negative divided by a negative. That gives me a positive answer. So it's going to be positive 6 to the power of 11 minus 8, which is 3. So for question D, you should have got 6 to the power of 3. Okay, so that is what we do when we are dividing powers with the same base. We subtract the exponents. Now remember, if you are working with um, powers that have more than one different, more than one kind of base, you need to work with the ones that have the same base together. So um, just make sure that you, if you need to, you can rearrange them so they are kind of grouped together so you, it's easier for you to see. But you don't have to do that. You can just pick and choose which ones you're going to work with at a particular time, depending on the base that you're working with. So just make sure you can only use this rule if you have the same base. If you don't have the same base, you can't use the rule like we saw right in the beginning. Okay, and then also be careful when you're working with negatives that you still need to work and make sure that if your exponent is even, your uh, it's going to become positive and if your exponent is odd it's going to stay negative but only like in this example over here if it is in brackets if it's not in brackets like there or in these other examples that we had higher up if it's not in brackets then it's not going to be treated in the same way so you can see over here we had negative 3 in brackets squared and we had negative 3 not in brackets squared they did not act the same because the bases were not the same in both of them. In the one, it wasn't in brackets, which means that the exponent doesn't get applied to it. Okay, so that is what we do when we are dividing powers with the same bases. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.